some elements of La Soledad Solitude, pictured Jorge T. Lanarman's debut feature film about life in a crumbling colonialist mansion in Caracas, encourage the imagination. Jose Jose Dolores Lopez spends his days and evenings scanning the walls and gardens of the house with a metal detector in search of a stash of Morikota's gold coins that his grandmother told him were hidden centuries earlier by previous residents. At night, lying awake in bed, he finds himself drawn into the garden, looking out towards a ghostly presence in the undergrowth. Though the film blends fantasy and realism, it is rooted in the reality of Chris's stricken Venezuela, just as Jose trawls the empty shelf shops and illicit street stalls of Caracas in desperate search of food and medication for his family. Mr. T. Lenarman spent entire days scouring shops for batteries while filming. Even fantastical twists, the sudden presence of Jose Longdeseeth's grandfather, a white horse appearing in the mansion's twilight garden one night, are met with acceptance. And why not, says Mr. Tilan Armand, considering the daily absurdities that Venezuelans encounter. You face very magical realist challenges here. The director chooses his words deliberately. Magical realism, a concept particularly associated with Latin American art, has proven fertile ground on which to critique and raise alternatives to oppressive social and political forces. La Soledad is the latest in a glut of Venezuelan films telling unflinching, complex stories of life in the troubled Andean nation. It might seem surprising, given the increasingly authoritarian regime of Nicolas Maduro, that these films have often benefited from state funding. Venezuelan cinema has been supported by CNAC, an autonomous state-backed funding body, since 1994, but a major reconfiguration came in 2005 with a reform to the country's national cinematography law. This dictated quotas for the proportion of Venezuelan films in theaters, initiated a tax on cinemas and distributors to fund Venezuelan filmmakers and granted tax exemptions for private sector support of Venezuelan films. Since the new law came into effect, more and more Venezuelans have been going to cinemas a record 4.2 meters did so in 2014. This was thanks in part to productions made at Villa del Cine, a state-run studio opened in 2006, as Hugo Chavez launched a revolution cultural to counter the influence of cultural imports from elsewhere, especially popular blockbuster movies from America. In practice, this has meant big-budget, tub-thumping revolutionary epics that perpetuate a mythology of Venezuelan socialism, leading the way as attendance figures fell was Liberty or the Liberator, a biopic of Simon Bolivar, the country's revolutionary hero, but independent filmmakers have begun to play a significant role, too, with the recent proliferation of social realist productions. Of the 4.2 meters tickets sold in 2014, around 700,000 were for Pelo Malo Bad Hair, Mariana Rondon's gritty examination of attitudes towards race and sexuality in the slums of Caracas. The film, which won awards and recognition across Latin America, Europe and the United States, is one of several recent releases to achieve commercial success at home and receive critical acclaim abroad. Zul Wino Tan Rosa released in Britain and America as My Straight Son, a Villa del Cine production, won Best of Barrow American Film at the 2014 Goya Awards Spain's version of the Oscars, a first for Venezuela. In 2015 Lorenzo Vigas Desdi Alla from Afar became the first Latin American winner of the Golden Lion, Venice Film Festival's top prize. Earlier this year La Familia The Family, directed by Gustavo Rondon Cordova, became the first Venezuelan film to be selected for Critics Week at Cannes. All of these films show how issues such as class, race, gender and sexuality have become enmeshed in Venezuelan life and politics. Venezuelan cinema is at a very special moment, says Mr. Tilan Armand. These are films dealing with social issues and that's a very good thing. And although La Soledad is an exception because of the terms of the film's funding through the Venice Biennale CNAC has provided some level of funding for many of these socially conscious films. But as the country's political and economic crisis worsens, this new wave of Venezuelan cinema risks foundering just as it is gathering momentum. Cinema attendance has dropped off in the past couple of years, as has the number of CNAC-funded films. Increasingly too, the bright, young minds vital to such cultural movements are leaving the country. La Soledad was shot in February 2016 when Mr. T. Lenarmand returned to Venezuela that December he lives in Canada, 15 of the film's 25-strong crew had emigrated. 
there's an exodus, he says, and that's very scary. Questions have also been raised about the independence of CNAC under the Maduro regime. In February Mr. Maduro stated the need to tell the story of Hugo Chavez on screen, to counter the distortion and manipulation, on the part of the television networks of the international oligarchy. Since then, posts on CNAC social media accounts have urged Venezuelans to back Mr. Maduro. In July Aracelis Garcia, a deputy culture minister, was appointed temporary chair of CNAC, a position held concurrently with her role at the culture ministry, drawing a direct line between CNAC and the government. CNAC still commands the respect of Venezuelan filmmakers, but many are worried about the future. There has been a bit of an explosion, says Mr. Thielen Armand, but we don't know what's coming after. As with many of those responsible for the recent critical success of Venezuelan filmmaking, he is already working on his next film, which he says will also depict the realities of contemporary Venezuela while seeking a more hopeful future. His production company is called La Farena, which roughly translates to the work. It's my duty, he says, to do what needs to be done. Spectators at home and abroad will be waiting.